Hi, I'm Andrew with NVIDIA and you're watching GeForce Garage. Last episode, we improved airflow by cutting a custom fan port and our red Harbinger cross desk. Now we've added all the awesome hardware and we're gonna make it really stand out with some custom braided cable sleeves. Today in house, we have Mike Landenberger from Lutro Customs and they're an awesome resource for cable sleeving supplies. But today he's gonna show us how to take this ugly monstrosity and turn it into a beautiful braided custom cable. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Landenberger with Lutro Customs. The modding movement has really been going towards color coding systems. Everything down to your components, hide away the cables the way they're supposed to, and then show off just the parts that you want. And that helps out with heat flow. There's two different materials that are widely used. There's paracord and then there's PET plastic. Paracord is a nylon multi-filament, has great coverage, comes in a lot of colors, but it's really kind of hard to work with because you have to stretch it so much. Now my favorite is PET. We have our own line Lutro Customs Telio sleeving. It's really dense weave. It makes it really easy to stretch tightly, which is a main component of cable management. It allows you to have a perfect bend and it'll hold its shape on you. There's a few different methods for sleeving cables. There's heat shrinkless and then there's heat shrink style. Heat shrinkless is basically not having any heat shrink on the end and the wire goes directly into the connector. Now heat shrink style uses little pieces of heat shrink that go into the connector and they actually hold everything together. Now I'm not going to be going over the heat shrink style but you can check that out on my own YouTube channel. So I'm going to start going through some of these tools that we're going to be using for sleeving. The first up is I have our wire stripper. I really do trust the Nipix brand. Really straight, really perfect and right on strips. The second one is the LC crimping tool. It's custom milled. It's made for perfect crimps. Third is a Bic lighter. I like the Bic because it allows me to control how I melt the heat shrink. Next up, we have wire cutters. I use this for sleeving and I use it for wire cutting. And last but not least is a ruler. And that's pretty much all that we have for sleeving tools. We won't be using all of them today, but I wanted to show you the basics. So I'm gonna jump into the PET uh, tutorial. You're always gonna to wanna to start out with either an extension or an OEM cable. It is most important. You wanna make your own pin out diagram. That way you are 100% certain that your cables are right. The first step, I'll grab my 16 gauge wire and I'll use a ruler. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is absolutely straight and right on. We wanna go ahead and strip off the ends of these cables. You're gonna want them to at least a two millimeter. Now that you have the cable strip, both of the sides, I do things a little bit different. This is the LC crimping tool. I will pre-crimp it on your female ATX pin here. You have a big set of wings. What you're gonna to wanna to do is set that on the inside, you'll see that there's a little shelf here. Now we want to get those wings perfectly centered and right in the shelf. You'll hear one click, two clicks, three clicks. This is what we want it to look like. So the next step in this process is I will be taking my crimper, opening up, and I'll hold it upside down. Putting it in, I'm using that same shelf on the other side and putting the big wings in the same spot and then I'm simply closing it all the way. If you look at this, you'll realize that it bit perfectly into the wire. When you go to sleeve, you don't want your cable to twist. So what I do is there is wings that are facing up. I will put my thumb facing up and I will drag it all the way across the wire so I know that that's my reference point. And then I'll take the crimp, I'll do the same thing. Now we have a wire that's crimped absolutely perfectly. So the next thing that we want to do is we'll actually take our sleeving now and we'll measure it out. On the sleeve, you'll see again where the crimps are. I will match this right where the second set of the wings meet and then I'll hold it without stretching the sleeving. If you stretch the sleeving, when you go to put it on, what it'll do is it'll be too short. Where I measured this is I measured it right up to the bottom of the wings. Now, with PET, some people will melt the ends. Basically, you're taking a Bic lighter and you are barely, just barely hitting the top and then you feather it down. And what I did is I sealed the end here and that makes sleeving way, way easier. If you do that too much, it'll 
bulge up and it'll make it really hard to, for you to sleeve with. And this part's one of the easiest. You're simply putting it on. Sometimes you have to inch it, but if you have everything straight, it should go right on. One of the important things with heat shrinkless is that I want to make sure that where the actual back end of the crimps, the stress relief, and these front little prongs, I want to make this right in the middle of it because if I went too far up, it won't click into the socket. If I go too far down, then you're actually going to be able to see some of it. This is heat shrink that I cut. It's one fourth inch heat shrink, three to one shrink ratio, and it has a thin wall. One of the key things about this is that it handles heat very well, so it's able to soak up the heat without making a big gummy mess on you. I'm gonna be taking a piece of heat shrink and then put the end of the heat shrink all the way up to the end of the sleeving. I'll take my lighter, there we go. I try to use the blue part the best I can, and then I will shrink it up just a little bit until it's just a little bit smoky. And then I'll take my fingers, and then immediately I will take my flush cutters, put a slit in it, and cut it off. What it did is it actually pinched down and it forced it into a cone. This will never come off of that end. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. This is our sleeved cable. You'll notice that it's tight, it's straight, and it's exactly the way we wanted it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our finished connector. Again, you have to make a pin out just so you don't blow up your system. I can't stress that enough. So I'm gonna pull it through the connector. The prongs on this side, the ones that face up, they have to be facing in the direction of the top side of the connector that has the clasp. It doesn't work any other way. Now, when I put this in, you will actually hear a little bit of a click. That little click means that your two prongs on the side actually are gripping on to where they're supposed to be, and that's what's gonna make a tight connection. What I always do is I pull on it a little bit, and then I know it's in the right spot. Now I can also look on the opposite side, and I will see that all of the pins on the inside where they're actually gonna terminate are actually level. And that's another really good way to see if they're gonna work right. I'm just gonna pull this cable through. Now again, prongs need to be forward, facing towards the clip. People ask me a lot of times, Lutro, how do you make this look good? I will hold it up in a vertical direction like this, and I will make little turns like this. But just by doing this, it helps out a lot. We have these awesome cable combs here. We're just gonna put them in good places. And that is how we do a PET heat shrinkless style. In my opinion, probably the most permanent style out there. So here's a completed 8-pin that we did for the desk. It's completely themed out to match everything. Awesome, that looks great. Well, uh, let's go ahead and use the seam and wire up the whole desk. Absolutely. Wow, this looks super clean. I really like your cable style, man. Oh, I really appreciate that. I, I really love how custom cable sleeving really ties the theme together even more with all the rest of the components. Looks amazing. So thanks so much, Mike, for coming in. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Of course. Don't forget to check out our next episode where we're gonna show you how to lay some copper pipe to water cool your GeForce GTX PC. Thanks for watching GeForce Garage, the ultimate resource center for designing, building, and customizing your GTX PC.